Our clinic provides the Salina community with a comprehensive spectrum of services delivered with compassion and sensitivity. We strive to create a partnership with our patients that promotes health and well-being in all phases of life. We care about our patients, we care about providing quality health care services, and we care about our community. Chances are you know many of us because Maori Clinic physicians live in Salina. We are coaches for youth sports teams and leaders for Boy Scouts and 4-H. We offer time, talent, and financial support to a variety of community events and charities. Our children attend school with your children. Our families attend worship services with your families. And we are proud to call Salina home. We have a vested interest in the success of this community and we remain committed to an independent practice model that promotes our proud heritage and philosophy to provide quality medical care centered on the relationship between each patient and the physician of their choice. You have a choice for your medical care. Choose a doctor dedicated to the pursuit of excellence in health care services. Choose Maori Clinic. My wife hears a big thump in the living room and then they uh, rush me to the hospital. The doctor and the chaplain looked at my family and said, we have a very sick man. He only has 5% chance of survival. I had a fibrillator slash pacemaker put in, and the second time I went into surgery, they actually did four bypasses. The team at Salina Regional Health Center, it's amazing what they can do. Couldn't ask for anything better. I think it's a whole new perspective I have um, on life, uh, thanks to Salina Regional. And it's ongoing. It's not gonna stop next week. It's gonna happen for the rest of my life. I hope to live another 20, 20 years, but I, I can't live without those guys. I mean, they're, they're watching my back. I don't know why they, uh, I'm still here. You know, obviously the Lord has more things for me to accomplish. I mean, it's just good to be alive, good to be alive. The friendly staff at Solana Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Clinic located at 523 South Santa Fe are always welcoming new patients to serve in the areas of sports medicine, total joint care, and more. You can contact the office at 785-823-7213 or toll free at 1-866-406-4141. <laughs> Hi, this is Stuart Haas with Slant Access TV. I have Central Principal Shanna Rector here, and she's going to explain to you how this bond issue is going to affect Central. Good evening. Well, really, the, the bond issue is not only going to affect Central High School, it's actually going to affect all of Salina and provide the, the type of education and the educational environment that we know that we want for Salina and for all of our students. For Salina Central specifically, what we expect to see is we expect to see that we'll have some upgrades in our science department. We'll probably see that we'll bring, bring our science to modern times and have a science area so that way they can share resources. We'll also see an update to our performing arts area. So within our stagecraft area, we have a beautiful auditorium, but the amount of space that they have to, to put sets together to kind of get ready for the, the plays is is an area that does need to be improved, so we're excited to be able to have that. We'll also see that our visual arts area will be moved with our performing arts, so that way they can all work together and make sure that we're working and showing off the talents of all of our students here at Salinas Central. Another area that you're gonna see updates in is basically the entire building might look like it's under construction for a little while because we'll see updates to the classrooms and making sure the classrooms are adequate size and that they're designed so that way students have the flexibility and teachers have the flexibility to be able to problem solve with students, get them into groups, and kind of look at education in a different way, making sure that they're all working together in the team building. Another area that we'll see improved is our curricular, our 
career and technical education aspect. And so we have um, some updates to our welding program just recently to get us better aligned with what's happening at Salina Technical College and also for industry. And so we were very fortunate to work with many businesses here in Salina to upgrade those facilities. And we'll see expansion of all of our um, career and technical education programs. You know, it's, the bond issue really is about Salina as a whole. And so we'll see updates to our elementary buildings. We'll see some uh, additional classrooms to hopefully be able to offer all day kindergarten. We're going to see at the middle school, we'll have um, some updates to the South Middle School Gymnasium to basically kind of put it into the same level that we have at Lakewood. And then also at South High School, we're gonna have lots of um, issues in the sense that we need to look at the structural issues there and make sure that that building is is appropriate and safe for all students and from the safety aspect you'll see upgrades to most of the buildings in regards to making sure that we have controlled access points for when patrons come into our building when parents come into our building and and making sure that they don't have easy access to our hallways but we go through the office and make sure that we're making the environment safe and conducive to learning so we're very excited about the bond issue we know that this community is going to to join with us and join together to, to look at what is best for our students and what's best for Salina. And so it's really exciting times here at Salina Central High School and also within the district. Thank you, Shanna. I, and I, I, I shared with her off camera, I worked as a para one semester up at Central and I am doing, um, I'm all for getting the classrooms bigger and safety. And as I shared on camera, we can always say it will never happen here, but you can go to Con uh, Connecticut, you can go to Colorado, and they would have told you the same thing before those things happen. I would rather be proactive and uh, have safe security for our kids. Safety, especially being still I have a daughter in school, yes, uh, that would be a, a parent's a worst nightmare. But overall, uh, I'm voting, my wife and I are voting yes for this bond. I encourage you all to vote yes for this bond. I'm encouraging you not access TV. I, Stuart Austin, encourage you. I know that Shannon's encouraging you. It will make our schools better and it will make them safer. And that's what we want for the kids. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Have a good year. I will. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome to, uh, I believe, week five, or four, excuse me, week four of the, no, is it week five? Yeah, week five. Wow, time's flying of Slina Access Friday Night Football. And we have Slina Central here, as you see the crowd behind me, getting ready to host the uh, Maze, and uh, I guess it's the Maze Eagles. And, and this is a team, I met Coach Guzman oh, a couple of years ago, his first year here. And, uh, Coach Guzman told me he had a job on his hands because Mays had never really been known as a football school, football, a good football team. Uh, they've been known for baseball, for basketball, and for other things, but not for football. And he had a, he had a job. He had to turn uh, people's focus to football. And um, the best thing he did is he went and he got the uh, community involved. And once the community got behind him, uh, he was able to uh, turn it around and it helps to have a great crop of athletes and he has a great crop of athletes. We all know that because he beat Central at, I mean, excuse me, he beat South at May's second week of the year after South had gone down to beat Derby at Derby. So that was an amazing victory and uh, they've just been on a roll. Uh, this is a very big but a very fast and talented team. They, they want to really take it to Central, and, they're, and they've competed by running our passing. Whatever you give them, they can do it. And they also have two quarterbacks. Uh, the, the first quarterback, starting quarterback, he's more of a throwing quarterback. The second quarterback is more of a running quarterback. But both of them can do a little bit of the other, and that's all they need to do. And we'll see you at the start. We'll see, just, we'll see you at the start of the game. Just brain dead. I mean, we got brain dead people on this field.
Good evening and welcome to tonight's football game sponsored by the Kansas State High School Activities Association and its member schools. Tonight's contest is between the visiting Mays High Eagles and the Salina Central Mustangs. This contest is being played in accordance with the rules of the Kansas State High School Activities Association. These rules provide for fair competition among players. Spectators can help promote good sportsmanship by observing the rules of fair play. Each person is requested to take personal responsibility for keeping this contest at the highest level of competition and to show good sportsmanship towards opponents, visitors, the people around you, and the game officials. High School won the opening toss and has deferred their decision to the second half. Salina Central will receive to start the contest and defend the North goal. Parents, we are asking for your assistance this evening and having your children sit in the stands with you. There are no play areas here at Salina Stadium. Kids with balls and other items will be asked to give them to their parents or leave them in their cars. Thanks for your support and cooperation. Eagles, number six, Caven Joe. Back deep for the Mustangs, number one, Malik Beal. Number 33, Dalton Peters. The kickoff is returned by number one, Malik Beal. Tackled by number 29, Chris Jones, and number 30, Jake Karst of the Eagles. It will be first down and 10 at the Salina Central 32-yard line. Well, folks, I hope you can hear me. If you can, please let my cameraman know that you can hear me. Mustang Mustang ball. Ball. All right, so I can. So I'm a little bit late. We had technical difficulty on our pre-game pre interview with uh, Mrs. Rector, the principal of Salinas Central, and then on my pre-game show, we've had some problems here with power here. We thought we had the problem worked out. Looks like we still got some more work to do with uh, stadium people. Our truck does pull a, three yards, a good three load, yards, and they've got us on the same outlet with the ice making machine, so it causes problems in our time. And we have a third and short, and there's a automatic first down. JW gave a hard count, and a defensive line, a no-no. Um, as I shared in the pregame, I'm expecting a really good game. Uh, years back, Mays is one of those teams you love to play because you know you could beat them, beat them big, and you'd be able to get your your uh, JV and your sophomores in and get some playing time. And JW would stop back there to uh, pass. Coach Hall told me they were going to work on their pass blocking this week. They were going to get that taken care of, and there. Uh, I believe that was a linebacker blitz. Let me pull out my uh, my player sheet. I can tell you for sure who that was. I think it was a linebacker who came through. J.W. 
I think uh, Malik on that on that pass play, instead of just trying to fake, you got two guys out there. I just lower your shoulder and go get all the yards you possibly can. You're not going to fake out two guys. You might fake out one. Especially when you got second and long. Now you're third and long. Oh, that was almost intercepted. Um, we have a nice breeze again coming from out of south, so Central is throwing into the wind. And both teams are going to look to um, to uh, use the pass to, to open up their, their run. And then that way they can use um, uh, the uh, the run option or the, 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 the ball fake to uh, keep your safeties up or to draw a safety up and then pass over the top of them. We've got a new punter now. JW been putting Malding they're putting four. Nice high punt, not gonna be real deep. It's gonna roll down inside the well, about right about the 20 yard line. That'd be a 42 yard punt. Maybe 15 or 16 yards on bounce. It is down at the amazing 20 yard line. I'm going to scoot down a step so I don't have to look around my cameraman, even though my cameraman this week is a lot smaller than the cameraman I had last week. So if James can hear that. Well, Central got one first down. Needed more than that. Oh, there's a run right up the middle. Now that's the way you tackle. You get him by the legs and you take him down. That's not Chase Javon Burst. Uh, Chase Wright is a, uh, is a six foot, 192 pound senior running back. There's a quick throw to the out. They had three wide receivers set back in there. There's some missed tackles again. And the two wide receivers up front become blockers. And that's where you've actually got to get three guys you gotta get three guys up there on the line of scrimmage so that the free guy can get up and can contend with the one who becomes the running back after the ball carrier, I should say. Coach Hall was really complaining to the sideline official on this side about something, and I don't know what it was. And talking to the central coaches before the game, they really expected this to to, to Central play a lot better. They had a very a good week, a spirited week of practice. Oh, there's now, there's uh, Central's. You can't jump into the, into the, into the neutral zone. Now you just gave him five yards easy way. Now you got a second down and three instead of a second down and eight. Following the five yard and I guarantee you that does drive a coach crazy. This is a good team. You don't need, you gotta play mistake free football if you wanna beat these guys. That's gonna be a touchdown. I don't know if the defensive back. That was Jacob Lyles, and I don't know if the, he's a junior, and I don't know if, if he, he, it looked like me, he, he lost his footing, and he tripped. This is what they call the swinging gate. And if the gate, if, 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 Depends on how you line up defensively, whether they, they try to go for it or not. I thought he had that block because that was not a very fast snap back to the holder. And I think he just, he, he mistimed his jump. If not, he should have he had that one blocked. And the defensive back coach got with, the, with Mr. Lyles, and Mr. Lyles has been having a great year. I, I personally thought in the second game of the year that he was the player of the game. And uh, I've enjoyed watching him play. 
And I, I don't know if he bought a fake by the wide receiver, and that's what caused him to lose, lose his footing because when I looked down after the wide receiver, uh, quarterback had, had, had thrown the ball, I saw immediate immediate gap between wide receiver and defensive back, and, and he was off balance. So my guess was uh, he had bought a fake and lost his footing. Number six, David Joe, about to kick off for the Eagles. Back deep once again for the Mustangs, number one, Malik Field. Well, that's not what Central want to do. Didn't want to uh, have to punt in their first series and then give up a touchdown to Mays on their first series. A little bit of a pooch kick. It's picked up by Malik. He's still on his feet, up over the 30. He was just one, I, I, I believe he was just one block. He could have got past that, that first wave. He actually ran in more of his people than he did anyone else. And if they just could have just kind of moved the blockers and parted them, but uh, the maze blockers did a thing. They just kind of formed a wall, and that's what he ran into was, was, is that wall. And there wasn't much he could do, but he got it up to the 34-yard line. That's a nice return. Wow. A number 25 for... for the Mustangs. Tackle for a loss of three. He is a, a, a junior, 5'6", 155-pound defensive back. So he, 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 right, where he's playing right now, he's playing safety. So. He was playing close up to the box. Now he's coming up, moving up again. And that's caught. All the way over inside the Mays 40 yard. Came in Cossel. Came in Cossel. And I think he's hurt. Cossel is thrown out of bounds by number 37, Corey Halt. And they actually could have thrown a flag on that because he did throw him down way out of bounds, even though contact was made inbounds, you've got to realize where you are. For 30 yards for the Mustangs. It will be first to 10 Mustangs at the Mays Eagle 39 yard line. He might just had the wind knocked out of him. It's kind of scary and does hurt at first, but here's a keeper and JW is going to keep it and get down inside the 25 yard line. That's going to be a first down. Number there was absolutely 16, nobody the out there. Take a rush for 15 yards. Tackled on the play by number 27, Corrigan Marlott. First down. They're going into a hurry up type offense. There's again, uh, uh, where uh, JW is going to go around the left side following the, the up back. And uh, this is just more of the Wildcat type pistol offense. So you're, you're creating an extra blocker because in the Old South offense, the quarterback handed off the ball and then watched. So what you really had was nine blocking on 11. But when the running quarterback turns the running back, now you have 10 blocking on 11. That was a handoff back to the uh, off to number 33, Dalton Peters. Dalton Peters, and he takes it down inside the 20. Number 47, Dalton Rupp, and number 43. Be third and four from there. We're definitely four down territory. Malik's not in right now, or unless he's another got him split out wide. Nice stiff arm. He's going I think he's gonna be short of the first down by about a yard. I believe they've got to get to the 14, right to the 14 yard line. And the ball is on the 15, so the fourth down to one from there. Tackled by number 47, Dalton Rupp. Brings up fourth down one for the Mustangs to the Mays 15 yard line. You got JW under center. He's going to hand it off to Malik. And Malik's going to take it all the way down inside the 10. Malik Hill up the middle for the Mustangs. That's going to be first down and goal to goal from there. And also number 27, Corrigan Harlett. There's a gain of six on the play. It's first and goal Mustangs at the Mays nine yard line. 
There's a quick snap. Again, now JW's going to keep it. He should score. He should. He did. He did. They're hurry up and get in the line of scrimmage. And a, and, a, and a hurry up, up tempo offense, not allowing the defense time to get set. You don't have to let them get set. And uh, the defense wasn't set. And they immediately did that quarterback keeper around the right side, following the, the up back as your lead blocker. And then he dove from about the three. You just got to get the ball inside the pylon. And that's what he did. Kick is good. So with 557 left to go in the first period, we got a score of Central 7, May 7. Now May is classified as 6A, so yeah, we have a number of teams in uh, in our league that are 6A that we play. And, and I was talking to Coach Guzman about this before before the game, back when you had a bunch of teams that weren't very good, like Mays and, and Goddard and uh, McPherson, uh, yeah, you'd get up big, you'd beat them big, and you would get your, your, your junior varsity and your sophomores to get some varsity playing time. That helps you down the road. It doesn't really help you towards the end of the year. And, and what helps you towards the end of the year is playing good teams and, and letting your guys go up against good players. That's when you really improve, improve. You, when you play against good players and you can improve your game against good players. That's when you improve. You can get into bad habits beating someone that you, that's easy to beat and you don't really focus on your technique. But when you come against good teams and good players, you have to focus on your technique and Coach Guzman said the number one thing is turn this around is the kids have bought into his program, and that is key. You got to buy it. You got to uh, have a team that buys into your into your coaches. Oh, they're pooch kicking it, and they're going to fair catch it. Robles kickoff right about the 38, I think. It is at the 38. Will take over first down 10 at their own 38 yard line. And I don't know if they're doing that. And, but, I, but I think I do. Um, the central coach, hang on a second. Oh. I'll talk to you after this play. I'm waiting to see it. It's a quick hitter. And now it's a race. And he caught him. Javon Burst caught him at the 11-yard line. I think he caught him by the back of the jersey or the, or the, the towel. I don't remember now who I was talking to before the game. But he told me that they have a very dangerous special teams. Mays does. So that's why the pooch kick. And boy, they, they can move the ball in chunks. They can move the, they can score uh, quick. And that's one of the things Coach Guzman told me that that um, has hurt their defense is sometimes they score so quickly, the defense is right back out on the field. And the defense just gave up a long drive to Central, so they, they're over there kind of winded. And uh, they could use a few four more minutes of rest and getting their feet underneath them, getting their air. And there's going to be a sack. Number 13, Connor Lundwitz, sacked on the play by number nine, Quintavian Hill. Number 99, Quintavian Hill. He's the senior 5'11", 238-pound uh, lineman. He had a good game last week against Derby. He really did. Um, I didn't really get the chance to talk about all the things I wanted to talk about pregame because of the technical difficulties we had. But uh, I thought at times, and I, and, and I shared this with Mike in, during the, uh, the, the postgame uh, interview, was that um, that the, the central coaches are yelling for a flag because a, a maze guy did move. And I don't understand why there wasn't a flag thrown. They pick up a seven on the play. But that Central's defense would play good for three, two, three snaps, and then give up a give up a long play for a third down, for first down, or a fourth down for first down, 
and it was like they, they could not make the play to get them off the field, and that's what hurt them. And Mike said they were going to stress that this week in practice, was being able to get off the field. Touchdown. I watched this. The defender stayed with, with the Mays guy all the way across the field. Then, for some reason, he just kind of gave up. Seven yards. And, and, I'm, and, and I got to tell you, though, your pass rush should never allow a quarterback that much time to complete a pass. Number six, David Joe, out to attempt the extra point. This is not a real firm snap like you see from central or south back to the the holder i really think if, if they can get a good rush around the corner they can block an extra point tip or even a field goal all right well with, with three minutes and 40 seconds uh, seconds left to go in the first period we've got a score of uh, maybe 14. central seven is going to be strange because this is a thursday night because south has a home game tomorrow host and hutch Hutch is coming in pretty banged up. Hutch would like a little bit of payback because uh, South went down there and really humbled uh, Hutch at Hutch last year. And Hutch comes, uh, Slina comes off a disappointing loss from two weeks ago, although they went down and, um, and handled a campus team quite easy. They really don't want to kick this to Malik. I, and I'll be surprised if they get to Malik again. Because Malik is one of those kids, he's just one block, and they're, and they're, they're putting it, they're kicking, excuse me, to uh, Dalton Peters. Oh, if he'd gone to the outside, he's going to be up by the over the 50. If he had cut to the outside, he might have been able to take that all the way. Dalton's got some speed to him. By the Eagles, number 20, Kyle Baldwin. It'll be first down, 10 yards. If I remember right, at their own 49 yards. he is a sophomore. And he's got some speed to him. So if he would have cut that, once he got through that first line, if he could have cut to the outside, I think he would have took it all the way. Is that sometimes where you can get tunnel vision? Okay, it's a rollout where you can throw it. Well, JW's got an arm because he's throwing that into the wind. But because of that wind, you got to be right on the money because that ball just, that wind just took it and just took it to the outside and, and, and a little bit deep. Casey's, JW is, is trying to put a little bit onto it to combat that wind, but he still overthrew Casey Reyes. That was a good play call, though it wasn't completed. I really like that play call. There's a quick heater to Dal Dalton. Number 33, Dalton Peters, the Mustang ball carrier. All right. Well, they, they marked him short of the 50 oh, on the kickoff return back to the 49. So now they got the ball on the uh, May side of the 49. So now they got third down and eight. Third down eight for the Mustangs. Got the quarterbacks in the pass block. Incomplete. We all know that as soon as the ball caught, uh, crosses Central 30, Coach Hall is in the uh, four-down territory, and I do say that facetiously. But he has he has shown before in the past, even at, at, at the 50-yard line, he has no problem in going for it fourth down. Fourth and eight, though, unless he's got a trick play or he's going to try to get him to jump offside, or JW who punts going to do a pooch. He's got some blocking. He's, he's going to get a first down. He did that all on his own, folks. They, they had three or four guys out in formation. Three guys going deep, one eye guy out in the flat. And he did a rollout. Now, when you do a rollout, you, uh, you cut down half to a third of the field that you can throw to. 
And he just spun around and took that back to the left side. Here's another quarterback keeper. And he's going to get some yardage down inside the 30. Number 16, J.W. Ball danger again, the Mustang ball carrier. They're going to say that's enough for a first down. Down on the play by number 27, Corey Bartlett. Well, I'm telling you right now, folks, Central doesn't want to get into a shootout with Mays. And, I, and Mays doesn't want to get into a shootout with Central. Now, now when you're the visiting team and you're coming in with a winning record like Mays has, then oh, Mays called a timeout because they were in the mix of a, uh, of a shift of moving people in and off bringing fresh people on and Central in their hurry up offense already had the ball was getting ready to snap it and May's coach Guzman saw that and immediately called timeout. Well folks I don't know what else this is gonna be quite a game. I I thought it'd be kind of close but I didn't think it would be a shootout, but I think this is what we're heading into it, a shootout. I believe that we could practice they had and, and the, the central coaches thought the short the short period they had a practice actually helped them more than hurt them. And if you're not dealing with a lot of injuries, that could be true. Now, if you do have injuries and you can use that extra day of getting people healthy, there's a, just a quick swing pass to uh, Malik around to the left, who came out of the backfield. I, I like that play call. Again, that's getting your speed to the outfield with Malik. That gets the ball down to the 21 yard line. If you make it second and three, and say, here are the young, another up to the line of scrimmage quick, and there's Malik. Down inside the 15. It's going to be first down. And Central's moving the ball kind of quick. First down 10 for the Mustangs at the Mays Eagle 14 yard line. You're going to carry the ball down close to the five. They're going to mark it down to six. Dalton, another quick heater. Tackled on the play by number 40, Clayton Moran. And you got a third down. Yeah, you got a second down and three from there. Now you're going to follow JW right into the end zone. JW seven yards to touchdown. I love the way they're using JW and, and using the running backs as a lead blocker. Um, not just around the, the, the corners. This time they uh, took it right up the gut and he went in from the uh, seven yard line. Here's the extra point attempt. It's up and good. So with a minute 45 left to go in the first period, folks. We got a score of Central 14, Mays 14. That's 28 points scored in the first quarter, and you got to consider that Central had to punt on their first series. So you could be looking at a 21 to 14 game. This is one of those games I think that Central is going to have to score every time uh, they've got the ball. Because unless they can force a turnover, Mays is a very high-powered offense. They've shown that all year long. They've shown the ability to move the ball in, in, in smaller chunks, and they've shown the ability to move in big chunks and score right away on long uh, pass plays and run plays. So Central's best defense is their offense being on the field, moving the ball down the field, taking time off the clock and putting points on the board. And I'm not talking field goal. I'm talking putting the ball in the end zone. Here's another push kick again. And there's no fair catch. He still got it. And they're good. I thought he got tripped up. But he's going to be tackled down just over the 30. And the kickoff is returned by number Well, that's a little better. Last time they, they switched kicked it to the 38. 
He has tackled at the 31 yard line of the Eagles by number 15, Jalen Parks, and number 27, Zay Heigl. We have a new cameraman coming up. And now that James is taking over, I'm glad I'm sitting down here so I don't get my view blocked. Okay, here's that quarterback read. We faked it to the man to his left going up the middle. Then he went out and did the quick pitch to the, to the man who had been lined up on his right. And he's going to get a first down. But that goes all the way up to the 43-yard line. Yard line. This is a quick pitch to him and just a hole there. Boy, was there a hole. And that there was nothing about. I'm telling you, there was there was no tricky, just a quick pitch to the left, and there was just a there was just a huge hole. All right, there they got some penetration this time. Once again, Chase White, number 24, the ball carrier for the I'm trying to see who they shot through there. I don't know if that was a defensive lineman. Looks like a defensive lineman has shot through, and a linebacker got through. And he's going to have enough for a first. He's going to be down inside the, the 35, or 45, excuse me. And then they're and they're in the same type of hurry up defense. All right, this time they got out there and they made the quarterback pitch early. The only problem is they had two men on him instead of having just one man on him. And then the other man should have took the pitch man. Now he only got three yards, but still, the way you do that perfectly is you have one man on the quarterback and the other man take the pitch. There's there, we got to communicate. I got the quarterback, and then the other guy goes, I got pitch then. Communication on the field is so key. Again, no pass rush. We're going to have a, a flag back here, and I think it's going to be defensive pass interference. There's a flag on the play. That's defensive holding. Well, I saw a, a maze wide receiver on the ground, so I thought maybe he'd got popped while the ball's in the air, which you can't do. But no, they're calling holding, and maybe that's what caused him to hit the ground was he was being held. But if he's getting ready to go past you, I know a coach would rather have, rather have a 10-yard penalty than a seven points on the board. All right, now they blitz the middle linebacker. There's good defense. There's good, oh, poor tackling. They had two guys there to tackle him behind the line of scrimmage, and the two guys missed him. Instead, he gets about four yards down the line of scrimmage. You just can't have that. You can't have that missed tackle. It's really important. You've got to keep your head up. You've got to see what he's doing so that when the running back, the, I should say the ball carrier, whoever it might be, whether it be the running back, quarterback, or wide receiver, makes a move, then you can adjust. Once your head down, you can't see that. The other thing is when your head is down, that's where you're going to get the injuries, the neck injuries and the concussions. You got to have your head up. You want to hit him with your face mask. We were taught to use that the, 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 the grill of our face mask like crosshairs and put that crosshair on him. And you put it on his outside shoulder and then you just drive that crosshair through the body. And that's how you deliver the hit. You know, I need to come out and watch some of these uh, practices so I can see how they are coaching. This is a nice, cool night. It was a little bit warmer than what I thought it was supposed to be, but it was supposed to be really cooler tomorrow. Maybe have a chance for rain. I hope it doesn't rain before the game or during the game. Don't need that. 
because I won't be able to have a clipboard. I'll have to hold an umbrella with one hand and a. Starting the second quarter, second down. All right, seven we've got a second quarter. quarter. Mays is driving. Uh, all right, a couple of the central guys kind of stunted, didn't come into in, into the neutral zone. And as long as they don't come in the neutral zone, that's okay. They can move around what they want, but they caused the maze lineman to flinch. And five yards, I believe that's the first penalty on maze. They went from second and six to second and 11. They are, they are faking the, like they're gonna blitz some linebackers. Oh, there you go, there you go. That's a nice fill by Tanner Robel. They're, they're faking like they're gonna come with some blitz, or some linebackers on a blitz, uh, our safety, and then they're popping back and another one's coming up instead. Uh, they're trying to make the quarterback for uh, the Mays Eagles to really not know who is going to It's intercepted. Nice. Oh, it was an overthrow. And uh, the two other defenders missed a block, or he'd still be running. It's intercepted by number seven on the Mustangs, Javon Hurst. Connor Lungwitz is a uh, junior 6'3, 199 pound quarterback for Mays. All right, well, there's the first mistake of the game, turnover wise, and it goes. Uh, against Mays in Central's favor. So let's see, let's see what Central's gonna do with the ball. Following the Mustang interception, the Mustangs take over first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. All right, let's see what Central gonna do with the ball now. It's a keeper with, oh, a nice lead block. <laughs> uh, Malik knocked his guy to the ground, and if JW could have cut, cut to the outside, he would have got farther downfield. Um, he accidentally ran into the guy that, that, that Malik just flattened. That's enough for a first down. Now here's a quick pitch. Again, Malik's got to just... There was a guy out there on him. D don't fake and go deeper back Number down the field. Deal, You're giving up more yards. Yeah. Just lower your shoulder, get in the guy, and get whatever yard you get. You, you lose four yards on the play. Lost four on the play, second down, 14. There's a nice cross pattern. Oh, nice, nice fake by, by, Auburn's pass complete number 81, Cayman Casso. Cayman Casso, folks, I just had really had a brain fart, couldn't think of his name real quick. He was the outside guy who cut underneath the inside guy and gave a nice fake and, 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 and got most of that yards on that fake. So now it's just third and one. And JW first tried to cut him up the middle, came around the left. He's gonna have enough for a first down. Three on the play. It's good for a Mustang first down. First and 10 for Salina Central at their own 47 yard line. Timeout Mays again, this defense was not set. This hurry up offense by Central is really giving them troubles. And I can tell you right now, Coach Guzman is playing not like very much that he's had to use two timeouts because of this, where you might need them if, if, if they would have the ball towards the end of the second quarter and they're gonna try to put more points on the board going into halftime. If you're central, this is exactly what you wanted to do with your offense, is put Mays into a, 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 into a quandary of not being able to get set um, and having Mays burn two timeouts like this. Oh, you're loving it if you're on the central coaching staff. Uh, this central team comes out, they're playing a lot sharper than, well, for me, my period, my opinion, they're, they're playing a lot sharper than they played last week. Uh, they seem more aggressive. There seems to be a very good game plan that the coaches came up with. The kids are doing a good job of following that game plan.
And Central needs to take this down the field and go put it in the end zone and take get the lead. Going to do a rollout again. Overthrown. Now he's got to remember now, he's got the wind at his back. Plus, he was on the move going forward. He did not he did not stop to have his feet set. So as you're going forward, you got to take a little bit off of your throw. And then with the wind at, wind at your back, you got to take a little bit off your throw. And he overthrew that by about two yards. Casey's fast, but he's not that fast. But the play was there, folks. The play is there. And they can come back to that again. All right, here's a quarterback keeper. The lineman, and I think it was the tight end, has got to maintain that block about a second longer. If he does that, then JW is going to get a lot further down the field. JW did, it, did a stiff arm, but he only got about a yard or two. They're going to give him a yard, but after he got a hit, he still got two yards after the hit because of the stiff arm. There's a nice underneath that crossing deal again. That's the number two to Casey Reyes. The senior six foot, 155 pound wide receiver. That puts the ball down at the 35 yard line. Low snap. Now there's going to be pass interference. Both officials saw it. Now they're going to get together and, and talk. Both have passed. If they both have the same call, then they come up and tell. That's a 15-yard penalty. Now that wasn't really a ball fake, but because. The wide receiver out here hadn't turned his head. JW had to pull it back down and wait to then throw it. And the defender reacted to that. And, and by reacting to that, he got in the wide receiver's way, causing the interference. Now he's got the ball up to 20. Now here's just a quick pitch. He just needs to turn it upfield like that. Yes, yes, there you go, there you go. It's going to carry down inside the 15, down to the 13 yard line, and pick up of seven. Now another quick hit. That play really there was nothing one, Malik, 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 Malik could do about that. He he was hit behind the line of scrimmage. And uh if he hadn't fought, he would have lost two yards instead of one. So he only lost one because he was fighting. There's a quick hitter to the wide receiver out there. He's gonna have enough for a first down. Gonna be inside the 10 at the nine yard line. And be first down and go to go from there. All right, now they're starting the clock in the play. It's a quick hitter to Dalton Peters, and he's going to take it all the way down inside the five, because they can take it down to about the three-yard line. Come on, guys. Once forward progress has been stopped, they need to blow their whistles. It's when you get all this extra, extra, extra activity going on. Peters carries the ball down to I should say extracurricular activity. Gain of six on the play. Tackled by number 25, Elijah That's where kids get hurt. Once forward progress is stopped, they need to hit that whistle. It's just a read to Malik, and Malik is into the end. In, it was just a quick read. He handed it to Malik. Malik followed Dalton right off the, off the right tackle, which is their, what they call their power tackle. Mr. Johnson, I think this Johnson, and into the end zone. And Citro has the lead for the first time in the game. Kick is up and good, and with 8-10 uh, left to go in the second period, we got a score of Central 21. 
Mays 14. And that chair is energized the central sideline and up in the stands. But I always want, I want to see the players get excited. That, that's where you, you, you got to have it. Now I've seen uh, crowds get, get a dead sideline up and going. And I'm going to be kind of hard. I, I'm used to central crowds really being into it. Uh, it just seems to me, in my opinion, they have not really been into it, and I don't know what the problem is. I know you haven't won these state titles or contended for one since Coach Diener's left. But you still got to come out and, and root, and there's a lot of empty seats here. A lot of empty seats. Now Malik is kicking off. I asked him earlier why were they letting Tanner kick and just to give Malik a break. And I was told by Coach Benoit, said no, he's, a, he's got a good mile. But the wind in his back like that, he actually put it into the white line outside. That went ball went over 70 yards. But the Tanner's been perfect in all of his extra points and all of his field goal tries. And he kicks the ball deep. Maybe they're, they're allowing uh, Malik to kick. Let him get some, some more into his, uh, keep his leg fresh and warm. Because I don't know what he's going to do in college. Uh, I, I think he could be a, a Division I kicker, but he's, he's a great athlete. It's a crossing where they had the man in motion. That's just too much. Too many missed tackles at the line of scrimmage and a couple yards off the line of scrimmage. They had a man coming in motion across from the right to the left. The, the one up back was to the quarterback's left, and then he cut back to the right, kind of crossing behind the man in motion, trying to cross up the uh, central defense. And they get to the man in motion, and now it's a foot race. They're not going to catch him. And that's 72 yards, folks, in one play. And that's the quick hit capability that Mays has I was talking to you about. Kendall Stewart is a 5'9", 155-pound junior wide receiver, and uh, he just ran away from Javon Burst, and Javon Burst is a sprinter. He's fast. Um, most of the bursts I've known have been fast. And... This Kendall Stewart just ran away from Javon Burris. That's going to be no good. I wondered if this, if this low, slow snap on their extra point by the center was going to cause them a problem. They got close to it in the first time. They got real close to it the second time. He just missed, or maybe the first time he missed time to jump. Yeah, first time he missed time to jump. The second time, there was actually a hole that didn't get called, or it would have been blocked. This time, they got a hand on it and caused it to uh, kick to be no good. So you got with 7.36 to go in the second period, score of Central 21, May 20. That missed field, uh, extra point could come back and haunt them. of a bunch look here because if he wanted to do a uh, onside kick he could do it and do it either direction he is a left-footed kicker Malik picks it up on the bounce he's still on his feet again he's he I, I think Malik's main problem is that he think he can fake and go around and it you just can't do that I think he needs to go turn north and south and go I know he's trying to make a play, but I think he's better off it's getting north and south and getting what yards you can.
I know I always quote Bo Schimbler, but I did grow up in Michigan, so I grew up listening to Michigan football, became a Michigan football fan. Dalton's still on his feet. He's still on his feet. Gonna be up over the 40. And uh, he broke two tackles doing that. Now they marked him back inside the 40. So that's a 20 yard pickup. And I think they took his, his cleat off. He's got to get it on. Time out for an injury on the field. Now, put a cleat back on. They don't call them football shoes, they call them football injured cleats. For the Eagles, number 25, Elijah West. Oh, there was an injured, I did not know that. We, but we had a, oh, there's the, the running back and their big safety, their top safety. So that could hurt them, hope it's not serious. I hate to see young kids get hurt. There's another quick hitter, the Cayman. He's gonna have the ball up to about the 47 yard line. But I saw a flag thrown by the official on the far side. There's a flag on the flag. It's gonna be legal procedure central. So uh, that nice play so will be taken off the books. And they go from being a second short to first and 15. This is where discipline has to take effect. You, you, you know what the count is, you don't move. He did the pump, he did the pump, and they're gonna throw a flag as we came across and went around him. I think he grabbed him. Covered on the play by number 37, Corey Howell. There is another flag on this play. Yep, yep, that's what I thought, he grabbed him. And that's Corey Hawk. He's a 5'9", uh, 151-pound senior defensive back. Uh, he knew he got beat, and he, he, he grabbed him. And that's the reason why the, the pass was not completed. Like I told you before, your coach would rather have you give a 10-yard penalty than seven points on the, on, the, on the board. Here's a quick hitter by Dalton. Mr. Coso has got to get up and go, got to get a guy. You're not to stand there. You got to go get a guy and block. And I'm sure they're going to be talking to him about that. Don't just stand there looking at him. Get up on him and block him. Lock him up and block him. Or you would have had a longer run play. Here's a quick pitch. Malik cut back to the inside. Now he's got a block and he's going to score. Before he didn't block, this time he did. And because he got that block, Malik scored from 40 yards out. Makes me wonder if this kick is good and if Mays would score before the half, if they might go for two. See, that's a nice shark. Snap back by the uh, center. That kick is good. So with the score, with 6.18 on the clock, you got to score a central 28, Mays 20. Now, if Mays would score, Coach Guzman is not really required to go for two now. They can still keep going for the one. But the, but the snap back by... Uh, the, the maze long snapper is not very sharp. It's not very fast. It's 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 slow and loopy, and because of it, uh, he's had one block and one almost block, and one where there should have been a holding call on the outside man blocking for it, because he grabbed two central guys. 
much. Now this puts pressure on, on Mays. They have got to get the ball, and they've got to go take it down the field. Because they're now eight points down. Which is a touchdown and two point, extra point to catch them. Gonna kick it deep again. He's gonna catch it. Oh, there was a fake and there was nobody there. And there was Malik, the safety valve. He wasn't getting around Malik. But that play should have been dropped in stopped inside the 20. And two missed tackles. Pushed out of bounds by number one, Malik Neal. The return for the Eagles out to the maze, 46 yards. First and, 10 and that's just too much. They're starting at their 46. They should have started with the ball inside their 20. Now, what Central's been doing, they've been lining four guys up on the line of scrimmage and then dropping one back. And their time's still rushing four. Oh, they cut it back to the inside, but there was their second layer of defense. They, they, they did what they were supposed to do. The outside man made him cut back to the inside, did not give him the outside, but there was no linebacker or safety coming up to fill that hole. Uh, two of them had actually overshot. And that's where you're supposed to stay on their in, your inside, their inside shoulder to give up that cutback. Because you know that they can't keep running forever to the outside. They're going to have that. Oh, missed tackle again. Actually, two missed tackles. And I'm going to see if the coaches, both coaches, let me come out and watch the Central and South practice so I can see if, they're, if they are teaching good tackling technique. And that was just a, a, a kind of a delay to the up back. And because of penetration, that went nowhere. He's going to get tackled for a loss. So he went from a second and seven to third and nine. And as I've said many, many times before, penetration is the best way to stop any offense. I don't really care what offense it is. They're only rushing three. And they run this little thing out here. Oh, a missed tackle, another missed tackle, another missed tackle. And he's gonna get a first down because of three missed tackles. Guys are dropping their heads. I don't know if you can see that. They are dropping their heads. You can't do that. If I have a defensive coordinator, every time they drop their head in practice, they would run. They would learn real quick. Fifteen on the play. Incidental face mask. Incidental face mask. Must have I was waiting to hear what it, what it was. So that's a twenty-yard play because of incidental face mask. Oh, the man was out there. No one had stayed with him. If the pass had been completed, it would have been a touchdown. And Coach Benoit was out in the field yelling to somebody, somebody missed a read. Two guys went with one guy crossing, and they didn't go with the underneath guy. Again, folks, communication is very important. They had a, either a central kid hurt or had a equipment problem in there, they had to replace him. Okay, they're blitzing, trying to get this hit in the backfield, but uh, every time they're blitz, they're running away from the blitz. Number 24, Chase White. The main I like the idea of, of a run blitz, I really do, and it's the difference between a, a pass blitz. You, you shoot a safety or a linebacker or two to try to get a play stopped in the backfield. But where they're shooting the blitz, they're running away from it. The quarterback, is, is for Mays is making the good read. Okay, now there's a pitch and there was nobody out there. 
and he's going to get all the way down inside the 10. Looks like inside the, or down at least to the five yard line. Again, these guys are crossing out there, and nobody is staying home to the outside. Again, 10 yards on the play. First to the goal. The only good, good thing about. Mays moving the ball this way is going to give Central time to move the ball and maybe put a no score on the on the board before halftime. He gave it to the up back. He's going to get down to looks like about the three yard line. They're going to say got all the way down to the two. Now here's the power lead, and I think he's actually going to maybe lose, or get back line scrimmage, or maybe lose a little bit. They handed it off to the running back on this side, who followed the other running back in more of a traditional run play. No gain on the play. You see now, Mays is right back to the line of scrimmage, ready to go again. But Central's not been switching out people, so it doesn't really affect him as much as it does with Mays. They're trying to keep free fresh. Okay, now this is going to be a touchdown. The one guy out there, you're supposed to make the quarterback pitch. First guy's supposed to make the quarterback pitch. He didn't. He went to the pitch man, and there was no one there at the second level. Nobody there to uh, get the quarterback, and he was able to walk right into the end zone. And that should not be. I saw Coach Benoit just uh, give a real frustrated look there on the sideline. I believe he is the defensive coordinator. Now watch the difference between the, on these snaps for the extra points. You can see this is kind of a slow, loopy, and it's blocked again. It is blocked again. So what you got with two minutes and 49 seconds left to go on the clock, you got a score of 28 for Central, 26 for Mays. If Central keeps scoring touchdowns and kicking extra points, now Coach Guzman has a real problem because not even a two-point conversion will tie a game. Because there, there'll be, if Citra would score a touchdown kick the extra point before half, that would be a nine-point difference. That means they have to kick a field goal. Because you score two, you're still going to be down one. So you're going to have to kick a field goal at some point or just score one extra more touchdown than Central. But if you keep having your extra point attempt block, oh, you're going to kick this right to Malik, which I don't understand that decision. Malik this time went north and south. And got up over the 25, and then going to mark him down at the, it's like about the 26 or 27. To mark him up to the 27 with 2.44 to go on the clock. All right, now Central's shown that they can move the ball in chunks too. They've got all three of their timeouts. So they're sitting real good on that, on, in that department. This is a quarterback keeper by JW. There's the flag because he did not let go of him. He was way out of bounds and still took him down. So you're going to add 15 on the end of that. Then went to 18 yards up to the 45. So this is down to the 40. And that young man is now over on the sideline to explain to coach, why didn't you let go of him? I know you've been chasing him and chasing him. you still got no one to let go. Oh, if he hadn't been tripped up, he would have had a nice long run on that play. The, the blocking was there. 
tackled on the play by number 40 of the Eagles, Mike Mora. It's a gain of two, second down eight for the Mazdaqs. I think that play will keep working for them. The linemen just got to hold their, their block just a split second longer. All dangerous pass attempt to the number two, Andreas. And it really did, I think he was throwing to the underneath, came in close hold, but it wasn't, wasn't there. And in fact, the defender, the defender had looked up. He might have had a play on it, but he was so intent on, on getting Cayman, make sure he had him covered. There's a good fake. He threw a flag. The only thing I can think of, he's going to call spearing. Maybe holding. Block in the back. So having a first down, moves it back to the 36. That was not a holding penalty. That was that he put his hand out, so that was a block in the back. And I don't really don't call clipping much anymore, which in my day was 15 yards. When they went from third and seven to third and six, JW is going to keep it. He's going to cut back. And he's going to get close. He's going to be within a yard of the first down. You got a minute 34 and, and, and counting on the clock, so you got fourth down and one from there. And the uh, they're switching out running backs and calling the play. I, I expect to see this. Uh, they're going to do a power lead with Malik. He's got enough for the first right there. 107, and that wouldn't be good for two yards. And he must take first down. And you get right up on the on the ball. There we go. 104. Now a quick pitch to the outside. Malik's gonna cut back in. We got a flag on the far side. Tackle by number 25, Elijah West. There is a flag on the play. Illegal procedure. On the offense. Flag yard man. Now that's one problem about the hurry up. Some, the quarterback has to make sure all of his people are set. Following the five yard penalty on the Mustangs will be first down 15. You got 57 seconds on the clock. But that's the quarterback, J.W. Maldonier's responsibility. Make sure that everybody's set. He's looking to throw it again. Here's the bump of throw again. No, nope, that was well defended. Well defended. They did the, the pump fake. They, some, some teams call it the pump and go. Uh, on the wide receiver route, they may call it a stop and go. You sell the underneath pass and then you take off. But they have a safety rotated over this way. And they're not playing two deep safeties, which they weren't doing in uh, mazes, which they weren't doing earlier in the game. But they're giving the, the wide outs a lot of room. Oh, that's way out of bounds, not even close. JW has got to remember, 16, get his feet set, take a little bit off it because you got the wind in your back and it is still blowing. Incomplete out of bounds. Coverage again by number 37. See, and that, that penalty hurt them. Third down 15. They've been driving the ball from the main 34 yard line. And I really like to see him put some points, and they need to put some points on the board. Then go do a rollout to the left. Throw back to the right. They got a man. Again, overthrown. Number 16, JW K Casey Reyes. He has got to relax. He's putting a little bit too much on the ball with the wind. He's got to take a little bit off.
And they're going to go for it with 39 seconds. Way overthrown. That wasn't even close to being, and I don't know if it's because it was overthrown or if Malik had given up on the route. Mustangs turn it over on gas. First and 10 A's at the 34 yard line. I'm going to try to watch the sideline and see if they talk with JW or with uh, Malik. Well, they've got 34 seconds and one timeout. They think like they were going to throw to the five, three wide receivers out here to this side, and they gave it to the up back and hope to try to catch Central. He got to carry up to the 40, but that's taking time off the clock. Now you're down under 20 seconds, the clock ticking. Intercepted. That was intercepted by number 27, I believe. Yeah, Zane Heigl. He is a 6'1", uh, 170-pound junior linebacker who was covering the, the, uh, the uh, tight end. And it was an underthrown pass. They're thrown into the wind. Both his interceptions have been the second quarter thrown into the wind. And it's going to take a uh, knee, get to the Junior locker room, and they go in the up to the first 28-26. Your Salinas Central Mustangs, 28, Mays High Eagles, 26. Welcome to the Mowry Clinic Halftime Show. And I've got to tell you, I kind of figured this is the kind of game we'd have, be a bit of a shootout. And what I'm talking about shootout is both teams are firing and not really missing much. The only two hiccups in the game have been two uh, second quarter interceptions thrown by the Mays quarterback into the win. Central turned the first one into a touchdown. Uh, the second one ended a, a last second drive here, you might want to say, by Mays, try to put some points aboard by going in the half. Um, and they were allowed to, uh, Central then was able to, to just take a knee, go to the locker room, up 28-26. We had that score because Mays' long snapper, uh, I'd like to see how he snaps for a field goal when the, the holder might be a little further back. But the snap for the extra point, instead of being a nice flat like Central's is, it's slow and looping, giving the outside guys the chance. They've blocked two, almost blocked a th another one, which they should have blocked. And on the, the fourth time that he's done it, which I think was the second touchdown that May scored that day. The outside man had a guy rushing on each end. He just reached down and grabbed him, and no one, that's holding. You can't block outside your, your body. And he grabbed like that the two guys, and that should have been holding him, and it wasn't called. And I knew then that I think we can get to it, and they've got to the last two, and that's a two-point game. I think this could very well come back to haunt Mays. We'll have to see. We'll sorry, see you at the start of the second half. Welcome to second half of Slani Access Friday Night Football, week number four. And we're sitting at a score of from Slani Central 28, Mays 26, due to two blocked extra pointed tips by Central. Um, that's something that Coach Guzman is going to have to get worked out. He has a dynamic uh, special team, and he has a uh, very potent offense. So his long snapper has got to get better. It's a very, like I said, explained there at the halftime show, I should say the Maori Clinic halftime show that he it's it's of a looping looping pass. I also want to say thank you to the both the Salina Central and Salina South Booster Clubs. They they feed us for free and we we greatly appreciate that. Um, I love a good brat, love a good burger. 
but I've been eating brats and uh, don't pass up a free bot. Anyone knows me, I don't really pass up too much free food anyways. But I, I, there's one th thing I do. I am disappointed about. I am really disappointed. That there's a very low turnout. There's a lot of empty seats here on Central side, and and Central is leading, playing some of their best football of the year. And I mean, play, just playing as good as they played, and the, and the, they they outplayed Hutchinson first game of the, of the year for three and a half quarters. Um, you take away those two interceptions that, that Central had in that first quarter, and. It uh, Central would have won that game, and I think it would have if they would have won that game. Uh, I, I think we'd had a, a whole different outlook and a different, uh, far different scenario. Of what we're looking at now of being Central being uh, one and three. So it it it's it's amazing that sometimes one play. Doth of season make, and that, uh, that that's very true. Uh, on a field that is as long as wide as it is, it could be one person maybe being a foot this way or six inches that way. It makes it, be, it can be all the difference in making a play or not making a play. And it's still amazing to say, even at the pro level. It, it can be technique. Your technique can it can have your footwork, and your footwork's wrong, so you turn the wrong way, and, and then you can't make a play. And it goes all the way down to Salvation Army football here, or back in the East Coast, they call it Pop Warner football. It's technique and, and position on the field can mean so, so much. Now I'm gonna say again what I've said last week. I really think we need to have a a a, a six-man officiating. And instead of having one backfield judge, you can have two who can split up. That way they can they can cover each man has has a half of the field instead of he having to run from sideline to sideline. Uh, I think it would just make that much more sense. It comes down to budget again. You'd have to pay for another official for nine games and more if you go in the playoffs. Well, I really think there should be a second deep because the way the kids, the way the kids are throwing the ball nowadays, and they're throwing it from sideline to sideline, having those two backfield judges, I think, would be better. You'd have better coverage. Uh, that was the uh, the uh, referee testing his mic. And my cameraman is back up here. He was having trouble with his mic. He needs to have communication with the truck. Central will kick off, and Malik is um, going to be kicking off. The wind has not died down. He's doing a little pooch kick again. It's hit the ground, bouncing around, but uh, the man coming back, Ford Mays, was able to fall on it. If not, that could have been close. That was a very nice kick by Malik, and that they just. They were just maybe one or two bounces away from being able to make a play on that ball. The only thing I don't like about it is it gives them the ball right inside the 37-yard line. Good field position. Okay, there's that hole again. It, it closed off. It still gave him a little bit too much yardage, in my opinion. I'm going to carry it up to about the, just over the 44-yard line, second and three. He's looking to throw it. Big that, big that. All right, they had a man 
underneath and a man over the top. But the man over the top was was a Javon burst was a little bit too deep. But it was the underneath man who got up and interfered with the play. He read the eyes and he got both hands up to mess with the, the pass, cause it to be incomplete. So now they got third and three from inside the 44. I'm going to hand off to that man. He's going to have the first down. He hands off to the up, to the up back. And Coach Gozeman tells me that he, that their quarterback, they give him leeway because it's a smart kid, and he knows how to make the reads on the run play. He knows how to make reads on a pass play. He's also given – it was a fake handoff and a bootleg right – and the underneath man was not covered coming out of the backfield, and he's going to take the ball all the way down inside to 35, down to the 33. And that's a first down. That's a pickup almost 20-some yards. Central's not done a good job of covering the second man out of the backfield and the underneath man, and they, they've, they've got to make a change on that. And the Central man jumped into the... That is so frustrating for a defensive coach. So frustrating. You're taught to watch the ball. Now they've been faking different blunts, uh, different stunts by the linebackers, but you, you got to know where the ball is and not go into it. Again, underneath man, and no one got out there on him. And I see the central coaches are really getting on somebody, but not covering that. I don't know if it's the linebacker coach or the defensive back coach was doing the yellow while Coach Benoit was calling the play. Oh, he gave him up. He gave him up. Touchdown. Jacob Lyles gave him up, and Javon Burst did not get over in time, and he was wide open, and that should not be. Jacob's got to stick with him closer to that, and Javon's got to get closer to that. First drive, and, and Mays takes the ball down the field, and they, they did it in under two minutes, and under a minute and a half. They're going for a two-point conversion. And it's good. Along with his two-point conversion attempt pass, goes to number six, David Jones. So now you got a score at 10.49 of May 34, Central 28. seconds remaining in the third quarter. Our score is May 34, Salinas Central. Now Central's got to take this ball down the field, and they get to put it in the end zone. Mays have been playing with fire. They've actually kicked off several times to Malik Veal. I, and in my opinion, that's not very wise. Um, the best return tonight has been Dalton Peters, and he's got speed. And if he, and he, if he could have broke that one tackle, he would have took it all the way to the end zone. And this kid's almost, uh, is only a sophomore, so, you know, I look for some good things to come out of this kid. He's got some speed to him. But the central coach is going to have to get with this defensive backfield, and they're going to have to talk to their, their cornerbacks and their safeties and find out what is going on here. Number six, David Joe, out to kick off for the Eagles. Back deep for the Mustangs, number one, Malik Field, and number three, Now they're squibbing it, and they squib it to an up man. And he'll get the ball up over the 35 to about the 36. Number five, Austin Witt. To the 36 yard line. Tackled by number 30 of the Eagles, Jake Karst. Mustangs take over. First and that's and good field position. Yard line. This time they did make sure they didn't get it back into Dalton Peters or Malik Veal's hand. They got one of the up backs who's 
I didn't catch who, who ran, uh, ran that back, but usually it's another kind of a good hands person. JW is cut back. He went around the left corner, but there was nothing there, and he cut back. He's going to get about a yard. Pick up a one on the play. But they had the tackle by number 47, the, Rupp of the Eagles. The safety come up shooting up, and they were shooting their linebackers as well. JW is going to keep it. He's going to get up over the 40. He started to come around to the right side and cut it back up inside the, the tackle. He's going to carry it to the 41. That would be third down and five from there. Malik was in the wrong position. They go fake it to him and give it to him. And he's not going to get anything. Number one, Malik Beal, the Mustang ball carrier. Tackled by a host of maze defenders. That kind of surprised me. Malik's a senior. He should know where he, he, he should be. And they're going to go it again. Fourth down to five. And it's a quick throw out to Casey Reyes. He makes one man miss, two man miss. He's inside the 50. J.W. Maldainer's pass attempt to number two. Casey Reyes is complete. Gain of seven yards. First down for the Mustang. There's a quick handoff to, to Dalton Peters. He's probably going to get close to a first down. Peters, the Mustang ball carrier. That's just a quick hitter. Pick up he's not a real big kid. As you can see, he, he, he's fast. On the play by he's only 5'6", 165 five, pounds, but he's fast. He's quick. Down, he hits the hole hard. <laughs> and being 5'6", he runs a little bit low, and, they, it's, and it's kind of hard to bring down a little guy like that. I think a nice block out there. Malik just lowered the, the, the boom on a guy, and the Malik's the one that's going down on the sideline. Number one, Malik Field, the Mustang ball carrier. Forced out of bounds by number 25, Elijah West. I don't know if he got hit in the head or if he got a shoulder or something. A gain of nine on the play, brings up second one for the Mustangs. Yeah, it might be a shoulder, might be a shoulder. He lowered that shoulder. Second and one. All right, I got someone telling me what now? Dalton is playing sick with a fever today. The young man sitting next to me is, says Dalton in his class, uh, Dalton's brother in his class, and he said Dalton's been sick playing with a fever, which makes his play tonight even that more outstanding. While they're working with Malik, that's going to be close to the first. I think we're going to mark him about a, about a half a yard short. And they're going back into the huddle. Maybe he's going to try to do a hard count. I'm not sure. He's going under center. He's going to just do a quarterback sneak. And Dalton came along and pushed him far enough down. If he didn't have it before, Dalton Peters came in and, um, and pushed JW on down the field. Malik is back out on the field, folks. First down, 10 Mustangs on the maze. It might have been what they call a stinger. You just get that stinger and a sting, and it goes down your arm, and your arm is kind of numb. But then it comes back. It comes. I think it just, it just, you just get, you hit a nerve. He faked it to Malik, and Malik, Number he followed 16, Malik into the hole, and he's going to carry it down inside the 25. 
Down to four on the play, second down six for the Down to about the 22. You got second down to six. You'll take four yards on first down. Number 40, Clayton Norod. And number 47, Dalton Rupp, in on the tackle. There's another quick hitter by Dalton Peters. Going to be down inside the 20. Look at down about the 19. That's going to be a pickup of three. Be third down and three from there. And this is kind of what you want to see by Central. You want to see a time-consuming drive. Keep your defense on the sideline, getting rest, getting water, and it keeps their offense off. Here's a quick pitch. And he's still on his feet fighting. I believe that's going to be enough for a first down. Go mark him out about the 16, maybe inside the 16. I can't tell from where I'm at. It's enough for a first. Where you go to school? The young man second he goes uh, goes to Lakewood. Another quick hitter by Dalton Peters. He's still fighting. There was a fumble. Dalton Peters, number 33, Mustang Hawkeye. And he fumbled the ball. And sometimes they're fighting for that extra yardage, especially when you're a little guy, they're stripped with that ball, and you really got to cover up with both hands. Now. Central's defense needs to hold. First down 10 for the Eagles at their own 15 yard line. They really need to hold. Ran right past him. Who are the guys was was linebacker blitzing in ran right past him. And I, that's that's the one thing you, when you're a blitzing linebacker, you got to keep your head up and be able to adjust to the running back. Whoever the ball carrier may be, whether running back, quarterback, wide receiver, but you got to be able to adjust. You need to come through with some speed, but you got to be under control. He faked to the man in motion, then faked to the man on the right coming back to the left and ended up throwing it, and it goes incomplete. And all those fakes do is hold the linebackers and safety in place. And that's off at the corner, that's what you're trying to do. Defender had gotten his hand on it, but he didn't. He caught it and he and he stumbled all the way down to the 41-yard line of Central. Central needs to hold. They need to keep them off the board. They need to take this ball down. The, they can't let them score because they need to get the ball back, take it back down the field, and, and score themselves. Again, a, a blitzing linebacker ran past the play. Miss tackle, gonna be all the way down to the 15-yard line. That's a 25-yard carry. Tackle by number four, I have no trouble with the run blitz, but your number linebackers have got to be disciplined to know that when they get, it, that they can't just run past the the running back. And that's what they've done numerous times. He's got four wide receivers setting out that staggered set. There's a fumble. That was good coverage by Central. As soon as he got hit, he turned, and he got hit. The ball fell forward, and the, 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 another Central player fell on it. Okay, there's their stop. That's the third turnover for Mays. Following Mays' turnover, Salina takes over. Coach Guzman told me that they're really concerned about this game because they know Central 
is a quality team and having a losing record, they knew the Central would be like a wounded animal and would come out and give them their best shot. And I would say that they have. Here's a quick handoff to Malik, who has stumbled, is going to stumble forward. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. He got a nice block on the edge by the wide receiver, which I think was Casey Reyes. Here's that quick pass underneath to Casey. That's going to be enough for a first down. Take it down up to the 35. complete to number two, Casey Reyes. And that's good for a first down. Move the chains. Six on the play. Tackle by number three, Justin Queen. Six yard pickup, good for a Mustang first down. All right, there was good penetration. That was a kind of a, what they call a delay handoff to number one Malik Neal to Malik. It actually should be marked up at the 31. That's where the contact was made. Loss of four on the play. Second down, 14. And you're supposed to be able to get forward progress. He's looking to throw it. The pump fake, incomplete. J.W. Monander's pass intended for number 81, Cayman Castle. Cayman Castle has got to realize that, that J.W.'s thrown into the wind and that he's got to come back and make a play on the ball. And if he can't make a play on the ball, then he's got to defer it into a defender because the safety made a diving attempt uh, at an interception. And you have to make sure that if you can't catch it, the other team can't catch it either. Another low snap. Casey's got his man beat, and he's got it. It's gonna be marked down inside the 35. He's gonna mark him out inside the 30, down to the 29 yard line. Now that was a good thrown pass into the wind. A very good thrown pass by JW. The play is good for 41 yards, and another Mustang first down. First of 10, Salinas Central at the Mays Eagle 29-yard line. Oh, and the missed tackles all the way around. And I don't know if he's going to have enough for a first, but Malik got that after a fake to, to Dalton and uh, made two men miss, made a couple more men miss around the corner like that, and they're gonna give him a first down. And that really was on effort alone by Malik. This is a senior stepping up. He was really upset after last week. I uh, wanted to talk to him after the game to make sure his head was up, but I could tell by the way, the way he was looking that he really didn't want to hear anything from anybody. And I can understand. Malik's going to take a uh, breather at that five-yard carry. Dalton Peters is going to come in, maybe even call the – J.W. is going to keep it. He's got some room. He's got some more room. Lost his balance. He's going to be down to about the 11-yard line. That's going to make him third down and two from there. Third down two for the Mustangs. And JW is getting a little more comfortable in handling the ball on, on these type of quarterback options. Now, so that's a nice deal. He just led Dalton JW Peterson, lead him right into the hole. He's going to take it down to the five. That's enough for a first down. There'll be first down and goal to goal from there. And Malik comes back into the game. He just needed a breather and catch his wind and get it maybe a quick drink. And they're just going to drive forward again with the with JW. He's going to take it down, looks like down to the two yard line. Pick up a three. Again, the Mustang ball carry. Again, a three yards. Tackle by number 62, Dominic Perez. Second down goal for the Mustangs at the Mays two yard line.
Don't be surprised I see the same play again. Malik missed the block. Malik missed it. Number 16 on the quarterback keeper. Tackle for a loss. Malik's got to do what they call a chip block. Hit him enough in the shoulder and then get up, up, up the field and make another block. Third down goal from the three yard line. And that's where you have to pride yourself as being a, a, a. Now now they're in the straight power eye. Malik Neal up the middle for the Mustangs. Power offset eye. Number 62, Dominic Perez Sutton. And you got two running backs leading Malik into the hole. Fourth down goal. Fourth down and goal from the one. Oh, they say it's at the two. He's going to mark him short. He actually ran into a wall of his own players and bounced backwards. Mays will take over on down inches from the goal line. That's where I think Malik Scott is going to put his shoulder down again and drive. Even if it means hitting the back of your own blockers, you just got to drive. But the, the, the central line got two, got two down yards down, down to the goal line, and then the guy stood up, and he ran into a wall. All right, now they're going to – there's like central is blitzing. They are. They're blitzing. Number 13, Connor Lombards. Just a quarterback sneak. That's all they were doing. Take it out to the three-yard line. This is where you don't need a turnover if you're Mays. You see him there's a flip in the defense to, to match the offense. They're doing that option deal thing to the man coming in motion or to the up back on that far side. Come around the left and going off tackle. He's going to pick short of the 10. It's going to be third and one, a short one. They need Central needs some penetration here. They need to stop this and force him in into a punt. I think he's going to have enough for a first. He did another quarterback sneak. And the only way you're going to stop that is you got to have a linebacker. You have a nose tackle right on the center, and you have a linebacker on each side, side of the nose tackle, and they've got to be right up on that line. And as soon as that ball is snapped, they've got to be diving in, trying to hit that quarterback. Well, you end the third quarter, you're going to score on Mays 34, Central 28. We only had one score in that third quarter. We had four, we had 28 points scored in the first in the first quarter alone. And it's kind of funny to be sitting here playing a game and not hearing scores from around the state because it's Thursday night, not Friday night. And I uh, saw Sam Sellers and some of the other South coaches here, and I see some some of the South players here. Uh, do a little watching, maybe a little pre-scouting. And more likely you, tomorrow night for Southstone game, we're going to see um, Coach Hall and some of the other coaches, Central coaches out here, as long as some of the Central players out to watch. All right, Central's defense needs another stop. And I'm going to ask this young man, do you play football? Yeah. What grade are you in? So he's playing Salvation Army football. So what team do you play for? Lakewood has a seventh grade team this year? Yeah, first year. First year, seventh grade. Fantastic. I wish we had been done this years ago. It gives you an extra year of getting the kids into the system, used to running central and south plays, offense and defense. Well, how are you guys doing so far? Uh, we're 0 uh, oh and like, we're 0 oh and 3. 0 oh and 3. What position do you play? Wide receiver and linebacker. Wide receiver and linebacker. What's your name? Gavin. Gavin what? Prester. Gavin Prester. Remember that name. He might be star for Central down the road. You can always say you knew him when. 
Now he's on, now he's on, Gavin's now on uh, Access TV. <laughs> All right, there's blitz this time. They blitz and ran right past him. Ran right past him again. Again, when you come in on the blitz, you got to get him in under control so you can adjust to the ball carrier and what he does. He got six yards. He should have been stopped behind the line of scrimmage. All right, that was good. You made the quarterback. There was a good hit. I see a flag. There are two flags on the play. Lights run, it's good for seven yards and a first down. Might be a face mask or something. Well, you got a legal block in the back and honing. So you take each other, the furthest one is from the line of scrimmage, and you mark that 10 yards back. I thought so. The legal block in the back was further downfield. So you take the holding penalty that was at like the, like, like the line of scrimmage. So since it's at the distance goal, because they couldn't mark off the full 10 since it was inside the 20. Trying to blitz again. One missed tackle, two missed tackles. And he's got enough for a first down, all because of missed tackles. They are not picking up that underneath guy. They were really not doing a good job of picking them up. You just can't do that. It's a gain up to the 28. That's what I thought, 19, not 28. Oh, good defense. Tipped away by... Adrian Castelli. Broken up by number 24 of the Mustangs, Adrian Castelli. And he is a 5'11", 160-pound sophomore linebacker. Nice play. There's going to be a flag. The nose tackle moved into the into the neutral zone. That's five yards. You just can't do that. Got a guy down here yelling at the officials, but I don't know why, because you're not allowed to go into the neutral zone. Uh, the official on the far side stopped it. I don't know if that's it. I guess they needed to readjust where the ball was supposed to be. It's the only thing I could think of. There's a quick pitch to the outside left. Boy, there's a couple missed tackles there. Number 24, the main ball carrier. You got a central kid hurt. Tackle made by number seven, Javon Hurst of the Mustang. He can't put any weight on that. And I know what's taking the trainer so long to get out to him. It shouldn't. They're sitting there watching them hobble for about five to eight yards, and they're, and they're sitting on, standing on the sidelines. 
The trainer's got to get out there faster than that. But missed tackles have hurt both teams. There again, run right past him again. Dropping shoulders, dropping heads, and allowing him to, to, to jump around you because you dropped your head and lose sight of the man. Pick up about 20 yards. Tackle by number 24, Adrian Castelli of the Mustangs. First down 10 from the Mustangs. And that's your first down 10. Central needs a stop here. They really need a stop. They throw it to the man who was in, in motion, and he's going to get a nice pickup. That's going to pick up of eight yards on the second down and two. Ball's on the 23. And Mays is starting to gouge him again. There's just a lead. And when I'm talking about a lead, you have a running back leading the other running back up the hole. Pick up a six on the play. Good enough for a nice first down. First and, ten, first and 10 with the ball on the 17th, and they're just driving at will. He's looking to throw. He was open, and if it had been a completed pass, he might not have scored, but he definitely would have had the ball inside the 10-yard line. He probably would have had a first down and goal to go from inside the 10. Number 35, Jacob Lyles. Second down, 10 for the Eagles. Uh, Mays, if you can see this, is using a bolt of signs like they do in college that has different pictures on them. They'll have four different pictures on it, and uh, they know which one to... Okay, it was a to play, a quick pitch to the outside, he cut it back inside because it got turned inside. And that's way too much yards. Because that second level of defense is not there. Your first level is supposed to turn it back. Then your second is supposed to come in and clean it up. And they're not doing that. You've got to beat the blocker to the, to the position. And you've got to beat the block if you do have a blocker on you. you, you just, and you've got to use your technique to beat the block. And in motion again. But they hand it to the up back. And he's inside the 10. Hand off to number 24, Chase White. Tackle on the play by the Mustangs, number 27, Zane Hagel. To gain a four, brings a four down one. That's Quintamian Hill who came off hobbling. And um, they're taking off his socks, so maybe it's a cramp. I'm hoping it's just a cramp issue or something else. But they're, I think they're looking at the knee. They're looking at his left knee. I hope it's not serious. Timeout, Mays. Mays is called timeout. They uh, want to talk this over for some reason. So it's his ankle, his left ankle. Must have got twisted.
fourth down and one. Central will stop inside of 10 on fourth down. Let's see if Central can stop Mays. I think they stopped him. I think they stopped him short. I think they stopped him short, but I'm not for sure. It's all going to be a ball position. And they did. Central stopped him. See, now that's the problem. When you have an offense and an offense line that's based on the spread, based on uh, Wildcat and that type of play, that when you really need a yard, they're not really practiced on just muscling up and doing old style three yards of the cloud of dust football. And I think that hurts those teams. And I've heard this said throughout college on spread teams too. Officials are talking about something. I don't know what they're talking about. Now the uh, officials going to over talk to Coach Guzman. Quintavian Hill is going to get back in. Even though he tipped up his ankle, he, um, he's really limping pretty bad on it. Nice pass to Kay McCossell underneath going across the field. He's going to be close to a first down. Short of the 20. That's 10 yards on a first down. Well, Central's got the win at their back. They're going to mark it good up over the 40-yard line. That was a, a pump and go. But they also had the inside man running a post pen down the middle who got behind the, uh, the defense. And if he had looked and saw that, he would have seen it. There's a quarterback keeper by JW. We got a block. He's going down the outside. He's going to be down inside the 20, inside the 15. Number 16, JW Hallbear. You want to score, but you'd like to see him take more time off the clock. Oh, it's going to be called back, holding on the Mustangs. Back at about the line of scrimmage. It's going to take it down to about the 30, the short of the 30. 20 on the Mustangs from their own 31 yard line. Now, first and 20 from there. They're making this adjusting to the plate. As you see, the defense is adjusting as well. Okay, play clock has started. Way under the throw and pass, and I don't understand why. He was knocked down. But, but the wide receivers have got to keep their eye on the ball, and when they see it's underthrown, they've got to make an adjustment to it. Now you got third and 20. You don't have to get it all in one shot. 
And that's what he tried to do right there. Take it off in seven, six, seven yard bunches. But now you got three plays to get it. And it was a pass to Malikville in the uh, in the flat, and he just missed it. And then he got hit. And now he can't put any weight on his uh, left foot. And that might be his ankle again. Third down 20 for the Mustangs from their own 31-yard line. All right, now you got third and 20. And you need some chunks now. Because you've got two incomplete passes. The yeah, it took a little bit too much time because there was such a rush and he had to run around so much that he could not get a good accurate throw to the wide receiver. And now they're going to punt. And that I think JW really should not have thrown it deep on the first. He should have looked for it and taken it in a chunk. He tried to go for it all in one shot. But that holding penalty really hurt him. Central had the ball inside the 15. And then holding brings it all the way back, and now they're going to have to punt. That's going to. Okay, that's just running down too fast. He's going to, I think, get up to about the. He's going to be up to the 40. He's going to mark him down to 38. There's a flag right there. It's, it's on May, so it's going to take him back even further. We'll take it to the 28. Central needs one of two things to happen here. They need to force a three now. Or they need to force a turnover. Just a quick hitter up the middle. Nothing fancy. Number 86, Kevin Davis with the maze ball carrier. Tackled by number 45, Green Green, and number 44, Tanner Roble. Gain of four, second down and six. You got a second down and six. He's going up under center, your traditionals. And it's a, just a quick pitch. Missed tackle. Number 24, Now the out, that linebacker out here has got, in the, in the cornerback has got to come up and make a play. You can't give up 11 yards like that. You've got to come out and make a play. A quick pitch to the left. Again, another missed tackle. And he's going to get positive yardage. Chase White, the Eagle Walker. It's going to pick up four and be second down six. I am really very interested now about going to watch both South and Central practice to see what they how they work on in their in their tackling drills. Another quick hitter. Number 86, Kevin Davis, the ball carrier for the Eagles. Tackled by number And he's going to carry it up Jones. over the 50 to the 49 of Central. Gain of three. He's going to pick up three. Third down to three from there. Three you can see how they're already set and ready to go.
He's looking to throw, he's gonna cut, and I think they're gonna attack him for a loss back inside the, the 50. Number 13, Hunter Lundwitz, sacked on the play. Gonna be a, number 45, Graydon. Gonna be a fourth down. Number 99, Hill. That's a two yard loss. loss. Two on the play. And it'll be fourth down and five. For the Eagles. The punting team looked like they were coming out in the field and then they got stopped by the coaches, so they're gonna go for it. I'm not so sure with five minutes and counting if I don't try to punt the ball. Maybe they might try to get Central to jump with a snap count. I don't know. There, we started the five second count. The backfield judge already started the five second count. I think they were trying to get Central to jump and it didn't work. Well then just don't burn your time out. Just take the five yard drop back to about the 45. It's still in good condition to, to punt the ball. Turn team in. Central does not. They, they're, now they're sending one guy back. Now they're sending one guy back. They're sending one guy back. And someone about halfway. They're watching for a, a, a fake. And he's going to return it up to about the 25. And Adrian took it up. And he was hit right away, but he still got a couple of yards positive. All right, Central's got all three of their timeouts. You got four minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. That's plenty of time. You need to punch it in the end zone and the extra point, and you got the lead by a, by a point. Somebody moved, and I don't know if it was. Uh, center started to, to, to hike the ball, then didn't hike it correctly. That's not the way you need to start you, this, this drive. Again, it comes down to discipline. It's a deep one. Came and laid out for it, but just a tad overthrown. And I, most of these long passes have not been completed. So I, I wish they would stop doing this. I wish that JW's just get the underneath stuff. There's a quarterback keeper around the rest side and went off tackle. And he's only going to pick up a yard. It's better off him rolling out and, and getting to the outside and maybe getting a little more yards that way. I, I, I think that would be the best way to do it. Overthrown again. Pass he's he's got to get his feet set, get under control. And now they're going to have to punt. The only thing is they took only took 37 seconds. Is that eight seconds on the clock? Is that 408? 403, and they took 37 seconds on the clock off the clock. But they're going to have to force a quick three and out or get a turnover from, from Mays. They cannot allow Mays to run this, the time off the clock. And, 
And Central's last two drives have been hindered by, by really not smart five-yard penalties. Oh, it went straight up in the air. Just went straight up. And now it's going to bounce back Central's direction. That was not a good kick. Ball caught down by number seven, Jamal Hurst. That's only about a 20 yard, if not 20 yard, punt. If Central loses this game, they're going to watch this film and be really upset because they shot themselves in the foot. They had the lead. And in the second half, they've not put a single point on the board. They were threatened, had the ball down and, and fourth and goal from the two and didn't punch it in. That's going to come back to haunt them. See, there's a lot of trapping going on there. You see, you saw two men from the right side of the line come around to lead up to the left. He's only going to get two yards. But they're trying to put more men on the left side then the center can have defenders on that on that side. Again, another one of those things, a missed tackle behind the line of scrimmage. He's going to get a couple more yards. He's going to get three yards. It's going to be third down and five from there. Central needs a big stop here. They need to put them down in fourth down and long. Because if not, they're going to go. They will probably go for it. And they did to the man, pitch to the man in motion. Missed tackles. He's going to have enough for a first down. They have not really done a very good job of picking up on that play. And that's where the linebacker, defensive ends out there have got to get up the field and stop that play in the backfield. I think he, it's Mr. Stewart scored on a long touchdown play on that very play in the second quarter, I believe. They have got to get a turnover. And he's going to stumble Number and lose a yard. Central uses one of their timeouts. At two minutes and 19 seconds. Timeouts on Central. We had a halftime score of 28-26, so we would see a lot more scoring in the second half, and it's turned into more of a defensive struggle, but also it's turned into uh, mistakes. Turnovers by both teams, penalties by both teams. Um, I think what's going to haunt Central more than anything else is having the ball at Mesa's two-yard line and not being able to punch that in. Second down and 12. You really need to force something right here. It's a, he's not gonna get much. He's gonna lose more yards. They, they went in a reverse. And you had two kids from Central who got penetration. I can't say that enough. They got penetration and stopped that for another two-yard loss. Central burns their second timeout. Well, Central's defense right now has done two good jobs. Now they're third and 14. And 
if they end up being fourth and 14, with two minutes, 11 seconds on the clock, the last thing you want to do if you're Mays is throw an incomplete and stop the clock and save a timeout for Central. You want to get a first down, but you also want them to burn. So maybe a soft pass underneath, a, a high percentage completion pass. But sometimes those are not even caught. We've seen both teams drop a short pass tonight. He's looking to throw it. And he's gonna have a first down. He's gonna have a first down. Central did not stop him. You had third down and 14, and Central gave up about 17, 18 yards. They are not picking that guy up that comes out underneath in the backfield. They've not picked it up all night long. And Central burns their last time out, and that's, that's gonna be it. frustrating for Coach Hall. They should have won this game. This is a game they should have won. And unless a miracle can happen, they can force a, a, a fumble. This is going to be another loss. It's going to be a disappointing loss. This is a Mays team that blew south, beating by about, I think, 20-some points. But it can, you can, I can hear the pads hitting. They're really hitting. It's going to carry it down inside the 20. We're going to pick up a three, second down to seven. And Sandra can, cannot stop the clock anymore. And it's 143 and counting. We're going to have tackle for a loss again. They're, they're doing these cross pulling the uh, two linemen from the uh, backside of the play to come around and lead up into the hole. Central has read that here in these last two drives quite well and shooting people into the gaps to stop that. It's that underneath drag receiver that they're not picking up or the man coming in motion and going out. They're not picking that up. Mays calls a timeout. timeout on the field. I, I don't know if it's just because the uh, backfield judge has started his five second count, which might have been the situation they had taken too long to call the play. Uh, they saw something in that their team had, had lined up in the wrong formation. And that's their last timeout. Does it make much difference, I guess, when you're winning? You know, I could see maybe they um, throw a pass, a safe pass, and maybe it's tipped or intercepted and taken the, taken the distance, because you only got 49 seconds on the clock. You need a miracle here. You really need a miracle. No, it's a, just a quarterback keeper and pitch around the left. 
He's going to be short. Number and the clock is ticking. 40 seconds and under. They need to snap one more time because the play clock is 25 seconds. I would just take a knee. He's looking to throw it. And it was almost intercepted. It was almost intercepted. That's why I'm saying, folks, that wasn't a good call by Coach Guzman or his offensive coordinator. I'd just take a knee. Because, yeah, you ain't going to get first down, but you're not going to leave a whole lot of time left on the clock. There's 10 seconds on the clock. It's going to take a trick play. I really believe it's going to take a trick play. That's what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to do a trick play of, of rip. And that's going to be the game right there. And there's a flag. There's a flag, and the game cannot stop. Cannot stop. Game cannot stop on a penalty. That's the game. A legal forward pass. That's that's it. That's the game. Welcome to the post game. I um, don't have Coach Hall with me here, and I, I told him to stay there. He's dealing with some guys um, disappointed, and I understand. They lost 34-28 when they led at halftime 28-26. And Central's drives in the second half were marred by a mistake, especially the last two. On their second to last drive, they had a nice long run by J.W. Maldiner, the quarterback, who took it all the way down inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line, but was called back on, on a holding penalty. And they were forced to, to punt. And then their next drive, another penalty that forced them back, put them behind the curve, they were forced to punt. In the, earlier in the fourth period, they had the ball all the way down at well, no, I think that was in the third quarter. In the third quarter, yeah. In the third quarter, they had the ball all the way down at Mays' two-yard line. Fourth and two. Now, Coach Hall told me he was told that the ball crossed the goal line. But what we could see is that Malik Veal ran into the back of blockers and got kind of bounced back and wasn't able to regain his feet and fell down. Uh, so maybe that's where they marked him. But you're always supposed to get forward progress. And, and that's an official's call. But like Mike said, if they had done a better job of blocking where they could have pushed it into, into the uh, uh, end zone, then they, uh, it wouldn't have been an issue. The other thing is they've got to do a better job on stopping third down play. They didn't do it again. They did sometimes. They forced some punts, but they didn't do it when they needed to mistakes they only had one turnover they forced three usually when you win the turnover you should win the, the game but it was mistakes on penalties and and negative plays as i told coach hall this team left everything out on that field they played hard i saw for the first time this year in my opinion a full game of Mustang pride and passion on the field. 
I can understand, especially the seniors, why they're disappointed. They've got one win. I understand that. But everything they did tonight, the mistakes tonight, can be fixed. The penalties can be fixed. Especially jumping off sides. You know what the count is. You don't move until the ball is snapped. Defensive line had two different penalties or three different times they jumped off sides. You can't go into the neutral zone. You can move as long as you don't go into the neutral zone. That is the width of the football, the length of the field from side to side. You can't jump into it. You're taught to watch, especially defensive linemen, you're taught to watch the ball, not listen to the snap count. Watch the ball. So these things can be fixed. So I have high hopes. The only thing I don't like about it, and Coach doesn't like about it, and I know that at, at Coach Sellers, the Southlands like about it, that South and, uh, South and Central are in the same district. Back when they were in separate districts, that was better. And I wish the state of Kansas would make that change. But Central still has a chance to make the postseason. They're going to, instead of being here watching South, they're going to go down and watch Andover Central because that's who they have next week at Andover Central. So they get a chance, all the coaches go down and really get a good scouting on Andover Central. I do have this one beef and I do have it with, with the fans. And I said this last week, there was far too many empty seats up here on Central sideline, far too many. It used to be Central games that if you didn't get here early, you didn't get a seat up there. You had to sit over on the opposing side or stand around. And it used to be, they used to put extra bleachers in the two end zones to take the crowd. Folks, you are the 12th man. You've got to be here. And then my other beef is those who were here, they weren't making a lot of noise. And I'm disappointed in that. I expect more. And I think you need to do more. You need to help this team. There's a lot of young guys on this team. They're starting to pick up what Mustang pride and passion is. They're starting to pick up what Mustang football is. But you need to be cheering them on and you need to come out here. I know it was a Thursday night, but to me, that's still an excuse. If you can be here for a Friday night, you can be here for a Thursday night. I'm challenging you to go down to Andover Central and be here. When Central's here, you need to be, the stands needs to be full and you need to be cheering for them. The disappointing loss. I tried to encourage Coach Hall as much as I could, and he appreciated that. The last thing I told him is, Mike, keep their heads up, refocus them, get them motivated for Andover Central. And he said, thanks, dude. That's what we're going to do. This game's behind you. The old Bill Steiner deal, be 1-0, and win the next game. And that's all Central has to concentrate on, one game at a time. And they can turn this season around. But they need people in the stands cheering for them. This has been... Slide Access Friday Night Football. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night since South will be hosting Hutch. Should be a good game. Hutch is a little beat up like they were last year. They want some payback for losing last, last year. But South really wants to be able to pay back Hutch for all the times that they got beat by Hutch on their home field. Should be a good game tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow night. Our Clinic provides the Salina community with a comprehensive spectrum of services delivered with compassion and sensitivity. We strive to create a partnership with our patients that promotes health and well-being in all phases of life. We care about our patients, we care about providing quality health care services, and we care about our community. Chances are you know many of us because Maori Clinic physicians live in Salina. We are coaches for youth sports teams and leaders for Boy Scouts and 4-H. We offer time, talent, and financial support to a variety of community events and charities. Our children attend school with your children. Our families attend worship services with your families. And we are proud to call Salina home. We have a vested interest in the success of this community and we remain committed to an independent practice model that promotes our proud heritage and philosophy to provide quality medical care centered on the relationship between each patient and the physician of their choice. You have a choice for your medical care. Choose a doctor dedicated to the pursuit of excellence in health care services. Choose Maori Clinic. My wife hears a big thump in the living room and then they uh, rush me to the hospital. The doctor and the chaplain looked at my family and said, we have a very sick man. He only has 5%.
chance of survival. I had a fibrillator slash pacemaker put in, and the second time I went into surgery, they actually did four bypasses. The team at Salina Regional Health Center, it's amazing what they can do. Couldn't ask for anything better. I think it's a whole new perspective I have um, on life, uh, thanks to Salina Regional. And it's ongoing. It's not going to stop next week. It's going to happen for the rest of my life. I hope to live another 20, 20 years. But I, I can't live without those guys. I mean, they're, they're watching my back. I don't know why they, uh, I'm still here. You know, obviously the Lord has more things for me to accomplish. I mean, it's just good to be alive. Good to be alive. The friendly staff at Salina Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Clinic located at 523 South Santa Fe are always welcoming new patients to serve in the areas of sports medicine, total joint care, and more. You can contact the office at 785-823-7213 or toll free at 1-866-406-4141.